Shalom. I'm Nitsa Moshe from Remnant Remedy, and today we're going to do a little demonstration video to show you what one would do to anoint their children and family members and themselves, especially when there's a cold, the flu, and in particular when there's a fever. After we show you what tools you'll need or oils, then we will also do a demonstration on how that anointing goes, and then we'll follow up with some other supplements or herbs that I have found useful over the years. First, I want to make a disclaimer. I am not a licensed uh, physician. I am a certified aromatherapist, but you will need to take responsibility for your health and pray and follow in the footsteps that you need to check with your uh, health providers for whatever it is you may need. However, what I will be sharing with you are some ideas and supplements and herbs and oils that I have found that have been very successful over the years. I have raised five living children and also ran and operated a children's home. And I have been able to successfully do that through 95% of the time with herbs and essential oils and of course proper diet and uh, living practices, healthy living practices, particularly biblical living practices. So uh, we just had the hurricanes, we've had fires, a lot of people are having respiratory issues and they are on top of that. The aftermath brings on lots of mosquitoes and then they're dumping fire retardants on the burning areas and they're dumping pesticides for the mosquitoes and bugs. And then there's the problem with mold and mold is a very big problem. So if you're dealing with mold, one of the number one oils that you can use is tea tree oil. Tea tree is excellent for reducing mold in the home and for the body. It's also good for fungus. We have had customers who have used the tea tree oil who are suffering from mold overexposure in the home and having to go in for medical tests to come back after two weeks of diffusing this heavily in their home and the problems in their lungs were gone. Another oil that you can use is clove bud. And this is really good to diffuse just to get it into the air for the antiviral, antibacterial properties. Most people like clove bud and it's also good when there's colds or flus going around. And then we have a blend, it's called Purify Me. And Purify Me has lavender, tea tree, rosemary, myrtle, and a bit of citronella in it. So some people use this after bug bites um, also, uh, or for cleaning. So I just wanna let you know, there's different ways that you can diffuse. Uh, one way that I'll show you here right now is you take your left palm, put a drop of oil in that palm, this is also great if you have respiratory issues or if you want to be, if you use a calming oil, uh, if you have ADHD or you're, you're, you're sleepy, you're tired, you have a headache, uh, you know, you can use peppermint oil or focus now. Um, anyway, you put that drop right there you put the other hand right here and you go around about 12 times, building up some friction and then take it, close your eyes and just cup over your nose. Breathe in at least eight to 12 times. And what you have done now is just created yourself your personal diffuser. And this is a great um, charge up whenever you need it. Another way to do it is you can put one drop, that's one drop of essential oil. You could put two and you rub it into these clay diffusers and then you can either wear them around your neck or hang them in your car. And whenever you're walking out throughout the day, we, a lot of women use this with, say, with rose geranium. Uh, if they're getting a hot flash, they'll pick it up and start to smell it, or with clary sage and or vetiver. But I would say probably rose geranium is one of the more favorite ones, or geranium rose, depending on how you want to say that. So this is a, a, a personal pendant clay diffuser. And then, of course, there's different uh, varieties of... Uh, diffusers. This one is an ultrasonic diffuser. And I'm just going to show this to you. So basically, you, you, well, this one has lights and it can change colors. 
Uh, but you put your oil, there's a fill line, you put your oil in there, excuse me, your water, put purified water in there. Don't use water with chlorine or fluoride. Put your water in there and then put 10 to 12 drops is my preference. Um, you know, just go by the aroma that it goes off, that it gives off when you're, when you're ready. And, and then this one, you turn it on and it'll start to mist. I don't know if you can see that going up. And you can turn the light on. This one has different colors. So you can use it in a room as a nightlight, etc. I like this one because it ha it has a 30 minute, 60 minute, and 120, 120 minute settings, so it automatically go off. It will also automatically go off if it runs out of water, so um, you don't have to worry about it burning things. And now, don't you know? It's okay for me to do this. I got a little bit of tea tree on there, but if you have hot oils like oregano, clove, cinnamon, you you do not want to just go right up to it and sniff it or let your children do that because it can actually burn the membranes. So you know, be careful. And you can really even do that with, say, something like lavender. You want to be careful. But, um, you know, sometimes you want to just go by and smell it close if you want, but not too close because you don't want to burn those membranes. So that is... And we have different varieties of these... Um, and you know, a lot of times you can just pick these up in your health food store. But this is real important when you got a cold or a flu going on in your house or when you know, you just know there's an outbreak. So if there's an outbreak, you know, just start diffusing in your house or as a regular basis, on a regular basis as maintenance, just diffuse. But if you know something's going around, start doing it. Um, di start diffusing and move it around from room to room. We have another bigger one that's good for a bigger area, but, you know, it would be good. I have teenage sons. I like to air out their rooms and put in purifier, or clove, or a spice defense, a spice thieves, and make sure that the room's freshened uh, because, you know, boys will be boys. And so, um, but, and then once we're going to show you how to anoint someone when they're sick, how to put the oil on them, and then, you know, usually do that like while they're in bed because they're pretty sick and then you diffuse this maybe next to the bed especially all night with the diffuser uh, oils like breathe free which is a blend that we do eucalyptus clove bud etc so or even peppermint okay first let's talk about some things that you would need to do a proper anointing first and foremost you would want to do prayer you'd want to pray uh, pray about which oils that you should use. Sometimes it's not just all about head knowledge. It's about the leading of the Holy Spirit. There have been many times during the years of raising my children and running the children's home that just the knowledge of something was not what worked. Uh, and, and a lot of times I didn't even know that. It was just the Holy Spirit would speak to me, tell me, use this herb, use this oil, and he would direct me. So number one is prayer. Prayer for that intuitiveness, of course, it is very um, helpful and important if you learn safety, and we'll go into that in a, maybe a different video teaching, but you want to be safe, and 90% of the time, you're going to want to use a carrier oil for safety purposes, and what the carrier oil does is it slows down the absorption rate, which stops the, the hotness of an oil and maybe skin irritations or burning the, the, the membranes of the skin tissue especially when you're dealing with, say, children four and under, uh, even more so, you need more dilution with uh, someone two and under, uh, those who are sensitive, especially uh, allergic to things, those who are on medications, there may be contraindications to the medications uh, in reaction to the essential oil. Also, an elderly person sometimes is much more frail and tender uh, with their skin. And then there are other things to take into consideration, which would be, do they have seizures? Do they have epilepsy? Do they have high blood pressure? Do they have low blood pressure? Are they a hemophiliac? Or are they taking medications that is purposely thinning their blood or purposely thickening their blood? There may be some indications there. So these are reasons why it's good to study and know what it is you're using and how to use it. And then of course, whoever you're anointing, as you're anointing them, if depending on the situation, sometimes you need to do that silently to yourself, 
between you and the Ruach and, and the Holy Spirit and Elohim. And sometimes, especially with your family and children and friends and um, people that you may minister to, you would want to pray aloud because, you know, the scriptures tell us that they would call the elders in and they would bring in the anointing oil. They didn't just bring in any oil. You know, it wasn't just an olive oil. It wasn't a cheap uh, essential oil. Um, it was probably the the resins, uh, frankincense and myrrh and hyssop. And of course, a lot of times if they went to the temple, the priests would have used the um, instructions with perhaps the shimon tov, of the anointing oil. I want to say something here that is a misnomer, misunderstood, that distilled essential oils, which are the most powerful form of essential oils. However, distillation doesn't make, sh doesn't make it certain that certain uh, chemical constituencies are in there. For instance, in frankincense, when you distill it, it's not high in boswellic acid. It's very low and minimal. So if you really wanted that boswellic acid uh, for inflammation, say, then you would want to infuse it, which is exactly what they did in ancient biblical times. They would take the plant material and they would grind it and then they would put it in usually uh, fresh crop olive oil and they would infuse it for 49 days and on the 50th day poured out, which there's a lot more to that, but it basically is along the lines of the Shemitah and the Jubilee concept. And so there were not distilled or essential oils. Um, they were extracted, the plant material and properties were extracted usually with a carrier oil like olive oil or palm oil, especially with flowers, and those are different ways of extraction. Uh, there may have been some other ways, but we won't go into that now. Distillation started out after the birth of Christ. Um, some have it a couple of hundred years later, 300 AD maybe, but it was originally basically to extract and distill alcohol, to make alcohol. Uh, so that was the purpose there. So my point in that, uh, to correct that, number one, but, but number two is that when they were using the plant uh, material, it was safer in the sense that it was very much diluted in a carrier oil, which would slowly absorb into the body. The other thing I want to uh, keep in mind is that, you know, you have basically have three classes of molecules and oils uh, in their chemical constituencies. And those are those that are high, that evaporate very quickly, like peppermint, uh, it goes into the body very quickly, but also excess very quickly. And then you have the medium range oils, and then you have the heavy, the heavy oils. Uh, you can pour 15 mil of myrrh and 15 mil of peppermint, and the peppermint bottle is going to look fuller. And I just want to mention that about our bottles too. Our 15 mil bottles actually hold about 17, 18, 19 mil, and we usually over pour them. If we only put 15 mil in most of them, which we do do with the expensive oils, it would look like, you know, really low. So this is not, you know, how it fits. It's by the volume and we use laboratory glass rods. So, so keeping that in mind that you have different weights, molecular weights of oils, myrrh, for instance, will take much longer to absorb into the body, and but it will stay in the body much longer for a couple of days, actually. So... That is one of the reasons why we carry uh, a spice defense blend that has cinnamon and clove, and you can look at the list on remnantremedy.net, and, and it carries myrrh and orange and some of the heavier oils. And so usually I reserve that um, because it's got the more expensive oils and oils that are you know, known to possibly change DNA and or heavy oils that would go into the body. So you have oils that are light that will go in quickly and get to work. And then you have the oils that will go in like myrrh at a slower pace. So I would usually use that particular blend for a full body anointing uh, when someone's sick, especially if they're dealing with a fever. However, I could use and often do if it's not a, a big epidemic and people aren't, you know, getting super sick on me. Uh, I always gauge it by the temperature. I can almost always tell, is it going to go into a high temperature? 
And so that's when I would use that oil, uh, Spice Defense Blend. But for the most part, for general immunity, colds, flu, you know, not so much the flu, but colds in general, some respiratory, uh, I could also use just what we call our Spice Thieves. And we have a Spice Thieves, a, a regular one, and then we have a Spice Thieves plus oregano. And that's the one that I use all the time on a daily basis. And before I get into the anointing part of that, let me just share a little bit about that with you. So there's different ways to use Spice Defense and or Spice Thieves plus oregano, in particular, Spice Thieves plus oregano. And the reason oregano is added to that is because oregano is a really strong natural antibiotic. So one of the ways that I use it is I will take about 10 to 20 drops, depending on how strong I want it, and put it in a spray bottle. And this spray bottle, okay, so you want to use purified water, distilled water. Again, no chlorine, no fluoride, a fluorinated water. And I would put my drops in and then I will shake it every time I want it. And so when I get up and I get dressed, especially if I'm leaving the home, I will take this, I'll shake it, close my eyes, make sure you take your glasses off. You don't want the oils uh, messing with your glasses and taking the finish off your glasses. But I put a mist, and I put a mist over my clothing. And of course my hair smells great. Everybody says, oh, you smell great. Um, but the reason I do that, and especially if I'm traveling on an airplane or a bus or whatever, is I want that antibacterial, antifungal protection around me. And uh, I think it also changes things in the frequency realm, realm et cetera, especially if you pray. Um, and then this is great when you're traveling. Spray it in your room in a hotel, spray it in the bed. We, um, my assistant sprayed this because the room stunk when they got in and they saw the bed bugs come out. So they asked for another room. I use this uh, every morning to spray my sink, to wipe down my sink. I use it, you could use it for your teeth, uh, to brush your teeth if you had to, but remember these oils are gonna eat up the plastic on your toothbrush. Uh, so it's best to take some Spice Thieves and add it, say with coconut oil, brush your teeth with coconut oil. Always put it with a carrier so it's not, uh, the volatile oils aren't eating away the membranes of your mouth. But you could do that. Um, you know, even if you wanted to add some coconut oil, you can spray your sink, uh, spray around your toilet, spray your rooms, you know, cause this is actually a way of diffusing, right? So, um, you know, just spray your clothing and spray a room, spray wherever you think, uh, spray your carpets, you know, sometimes after I vacuum, I'll go across the bottom of the carpets with that. And I just carry it around this with me. I have had uh, customers who use this on their dogs. Be very careful when you use essential oils around your cats because they have a fast metabolism and so you really need to look up in the specialty area of dealing with cats and animals. But we have used this for hoof rot, for goats, sheep, um, horses, ca uh, cattle, and uh, some people use it on their dogs and um, to help deter bugs. And it used to come with citronella. However, I don't put citronella in, any, in it anymore because for some people, citronella causes issues. And for me in particular, I would get a migraine from it. So if you want to use this with citronella, then buy citronella separately and add it. Citronella is very inexpensive compared to most oils. And then some people take it in addition, mix it for the blend to spray on their dogs in particular, or say maybe their, their sheep or their goats, um, because they can, some say they sit there and watch the fleas drop off. So anyway, that's one way to use that. And then of course, we're, we can use it as an anointing, part of the anointing and or to diffuse. So it's excellent to diffuse. And I would probably prefer to diffuse Spice These or Spice These plus Oregano instead of spice defense not that you can't it's just that it has some of the heavier oils and so i don't um so let's say we have someone who you know there's a sickness going around in the house and um we either want to take precautions or we're really dealing with um maybe people are getting sick more than a day or two it's more than you know just a little cold 
and there's maybe a fever going around. I would use Spice Defense. And again, you can use Spice These or Spice These plus Oregano. And some of the tools that you're gonna want. First of all, always use glass. Don't use plastic, okay? Uh, you either would want stainless steel or glass, but I think that glass has a basically a better energy and interacts with the oils better. Uh, for instance, let me point this out. I won't show the brand, but uh, I bought this at a lavender festival and it's an aluminum bottle. And versus our sprays, we would always put in a glass. Um, this is, you know, inexpensive, it's nice, it's handy, but I don't want aluminum uh, interacting um, because of basically conditions like Alzheimer's, uh, you know, any kind of metal that affects the brain or the body. So I personally wouldn't use that. Um, but I bought this, uh, one, to make an example, but two, uh, so I wouldn't use this on my body, but I would use it if, um, you know, they actually sold this as a moisturizing hand sanitizer, but you can do the exact same thing with our Spice Thieves plus Oregano or Spice Thieves. Uh, you could probably do it just with lavender or tea tree, actually. Uh, you know, make your own spray bottle. So, but, you know, what I do use this for, I use it in the kitchen. Uh, that's how I'm going to use it up. So I will spray it on my wash rags after um, my dish rags after I get through washing the dishes and spray my sink down. So, uh, which, of course, normally I would do with spice these. But that's how I will take care of that. So... What you can do is you can either take, you know, most everybody's got a plate, a small plate. What's really nice and useful my, that I used to use a lot is, you, and you can get these at like Goodwill or, or whatever. You know, they don't even have to match because all you really care about is this bottom teacup, part of the teacup, right? So this one doesn't actually really match. But I take this and I'm going to put my oils in it, right? So most people can do that. Um, then these come in handy for that. What I have found, and I'm hoping to, to locate again so I can retail them again, uh, it's been really hard finding the wholesaler on this, but is this is pottery, okay? And it's got recycled broken glass in it. And I like this because it fits just perfectly within the hand for when I'm doing anointings and applying it to children and, and my husband, etc. You can do it with that, but you see how much wider it is. And... Then this one I got in Israel this past uh, spring. Uh, it's, it's finished here, but this outer edge has only been baked once. It doesn't have a finish. So uh, what is kind of cool about that is it would be much like the pendant diffuser because it's both ceramic clay. You could put oils in there just to lay around the house, and it would diffuse the smell. But the part I'm going to want to use is this right here with the glass. Okay, and this area here. And, um, but we're not gonna use that today. We're gonna use this one because this fits perfectly in my hand and I don't want that necessarily diffusing in right now. So the other thing is, is that when you're, when you're dealing with your oils, you either wanna mix it with your fingers with your carrier oil or wooden chopsticks are great. Uh, toothpicks, wooden toothpicks, you don't want to use plastic because the oil will break down the plastic and leach the plastic into the essential oil. And if you also have to, you can use stainless steel. So some of the regular carry oils is olive oil. This one happens to be from Israel and I really would rather save it for eating. Um, then you can use fractionated coconut oil, which is what we use in our blends where we add a carrier oil. We do have a lot of other carrier oils that we do use, but this is one of the main ones you'll see in the industry because it has basically indefinite shelf life. What they have done is removed the part that makes the coconut, uh, you know, has the living part. And so the rancid, but living things and living parts of the plant go rancid. So that has been extracted and we call it fractionated coconut oil or FCO. And that is what we'll use. The other thing I like about FCO is it, it doesn't stain as much. Usually it's a lighter oil. And so it doesn't always wash out of clothing, but a lot of times it does. Be careful, though. I, I've never met anyone, but I've heard there are a few people 
who have an allergy to it. So again, I, I've never had that problem in the 10, 20 years I've been doing this, but um, maybe it's the quality or wherever they imported that oil from. Okay, besides a carrier oil, you can use a salve. You can either make your own salve, a very basic salve, or you could use, you know, fresh, cold pressed um, coconut oil. But what I like to use and carry a lot with me, and also use it for skin and softening and things like that, is we make our own salve. We have a basic, uh, a Remnant Mama basic salve. So, and what I know about this is now it doesn't have any other chemicals. Um, I will take and use my essential oils to put on my face, um, you know, like frankincense and myrrh, or if I'm dealing with, uh, say, warts, I'll take some of this out. I'll use a little spoon. I'll dip it out, you know, and put it in here, and then stir it around. And I'll show you how I do that. I just don't want to take out of this one here. Here's the big... Basically, this is the big bottle. So we sell them in different size. So basically, this one, it's, you know, we make different kinds. We have a Yada salve. Um, we have all kinds. But anyway, this one you can take. And so what I've done here is I'm taking the salve here. And I can either use straight carrier oil or I can use this. I particularly like the salve when I'm dealing with a cut or a wound. I will take uh, Olive Care, which is first aid, Olive Mean first or head, and I would put several drops in there and then put that on a cut or wound or bruise. Um, if I'm dealing with hard calloused feet, I might put frankincense and myrrh or maybe sandalwood, neroli, um, maybe lavender. I personally don't like lavender, so you won't see me talk a lot about it. Um, I, most people love lavender, um, just not one of them. Okay, so here we go. So you can either use the salve, and this is spice these plus oregano. And so I put about 10, 12 drops, okay? Now the idea here though, is that you're going to need enough oil to do the entire body, although you, you're going to need enough oil to do the entire body, although you could do just the feet, the hands, and maybe under the, around the neck, under the arms. Um, I just find that especially at nighttime when there's a, a sickness going through the home, especially where there's a fever, a whole body anointing is the best. So when I take that, I put it in there like this, and I stir all that up. So that, that essential oil is all mixed in there, okay? Now I can tell you now that if I'm doing a whole body thing, this might be good for a foot and a leg, <laughs> but I'm gonna, and in this case, normally you would do one or the other, but in this case, I'm gonna do both. Here's the fractionated coconut oil, okay? And so I'm just stirring that around. One of the reasons I like this salve, especially when you're doing the bottom of the feet, is it, it uh, it's just easier to apply. You don't have to worry about it running off as much. And so, you know, you got your little wooden stick or toothpick and then mix that up. And so from that is where I'm going to use and apply the anointing oil. Uh, from head to toe, which is where we get the word uh, massage, is from the Mashiach, which is Yeshua, Jesus, as some know him, Yahushua. And so... That's what we're going to do. And we're going to uh, come right back and we're going to show you how to do that anointing. Okay, so we're going to show you, number one, how to do a proper anointing when you're praying for someone. And then we're going to do the kind of anointing that we would if someone's sick and we want to help build their immune system to fight off whatever is attacking them. First of all, I would like to introduce my assistant here. This is Miss Brianna Brooks, and she happens to be the artist for our Hebrew English reflexology charts. And so we really appreciate the work that she's done. And when you ever place your first order here with Remnant Remedy, we give you a free chart. We also sell them for $2 a piece um, for the reflexology chart. And then we have a little bit of information about what we call Shimon Debar reflexology. 
Okay, so let's say, you know, in the Christian realm, we usually stand in front of someone and we pray for them, right? And we'll even hold their hands, et cetera, in front of them. Well, from a, from a biblical uh, Jewish perspective, we would not do that. Number one, you don't really touch anyone that you're not very familiar with, like a husband and wife, mother, son, et cetera. You just don't, they just don't go around putting their hands because they understand frequencies, energy, spirit, um, and, you know, you just won't want anyone laying hands on you praying. Also, biblically, is not the way it's done. The number one principle is if I stand in front of her, let me turn around, if I stand in front of her and I'm praying for her, I am now acting, in this case, like the high priest, uh, even though, but the problem is the high priest didn't even do this. Uh, Yeshua, okay? Yeshua is the mediator between Elohim and a person, right? Which I guess is great if he's doing it, but if I'm standing in front of her, who am I to be standing in front of her between her face-to-face, -face, pene pene to Elohim? So what we do is, and this I believe is in Exodus 29, the way they did the priest, they would take the anointing, the anointing oil, uh, you can use frankincense and myrrh, cedar wood, we have different kinds of blends that you can do this with, uh, Geula, Dodi, Kohen, Hadassah, Prayer Warrior. And you take it and you anoint in the right earlobe, the right thumb, and the right big toe. Lift your toe a little there. Let's see. Okay. And again, as we talked earlier, you can look up those reflexology points and they represent uh, the brain, the heart, the heart from the point of it being in your mind. And so that, and then of course, what they do with the priests, they also would use the, the uh, shofar, the ram's horn, to pour out the anointing on the king or the priest. And so this is how we would pray for someone, and we would come behind them and pray. If we did lay hands on them, um, that it would warrant that, but we don't need to. You know, maybe if it's a husband, wife, or a familiar situation, but we would come from behind. So that my right hand is on her right side and my left hand is on her left side. From a frequency energy point of view, and I know, again, this is not woo-woo. If we had um, the right uh, biophoton technology equipment that's very expensive that a lot of doctors and scientists have, you could see the auras in the fields. Um, back in the 70s, we called it, you know, the aura with uh, Welcome Back Cotter. But in, in Hebrew, or is light, so aura is light. But today the scientists call it your biophoton field. So basically, if you put your arms out, right here, if you, if you had the technology, you could measure and see the colors and energy around her body, and it basically, your, your aura or your biophoton field is basically this, okay, that realm right there. So if I am going to pray for it, it's better for me to stand behind with her relating to Elohim, I'm just supporting. I don't have to touch her, but if she was my daughter or husband or child or whatever, I could do it this way. If she turns around and I do it, now my right hand or arm is on her left. And so now the flow of electricity and energy is reversed and, sta and, and can become stagnant, okay? So that, when you pray for someone, that would be the proper Jewish way to do it uh, from the sage's point of view. So anyway, from a biblical perspective and from uh, a Jewish sage perspective, aromatherapy, this is how you would anoint someone, okay? Especially for prayer, interceding, etc. But now we're going to do an anointing for when we're going to do a, a massage or an anointing for someone when they're ill. So some of the things that you're gonna need for an anointing, especially, uh, I usually do this at night uh, before they go down to sleep. Uh, if they're homesick, then of course we do it in the middle of the day. And if they're in bed sick for a day or two, then we would do this at night. And we would do it in the morning when they awake. And again, maybe in the middle of the day, especially if there's a high fever going on. But my, my record of this is for the last 30 years is, it usually only takes one or two anointings and the fever breaks. I have seen it once or twice go to two and three days, but that was something major with major outbreaks. And um, 
there were other people with similar conditions in the region that we lived. They were sick and in and out of the hospital for two to three weeks, whereas we broke it in three days. So normally I see this broken within one to two tries, maybe three. That's the normal. And so one of the things you want to do is because you want to protect your bedding and your linens from uh, the the carrier oil, essential oils. So I like to use a big, this one, this is a big thick, thick um, towel. And I would just put it, you know, if this was the bed, then we would put in the bed. And I would definitely put it up over the pillows or have another towel for the pillows because you're going to anoint their neck for sure. Okay. Now, I'm going to before, because we're not going to do this like... <laughs> We're just going to give you a demonstration, okay? But here's the thing. When we lay um, our subject down, we're going to start at the bottom of her feet, okay? And I'm only going to show you partially how that would be done. But I would start at the bottom of the feet, and I would work my way up the body. And I'm going to show you and demonstrate from the top down what I would do with the oils, okay? So I have the oils here pre-mixed, and I'm going to put them on both sides of her neck, and that's where the, most of the lymph nodes are, and if a person's sick, a lot of times you can feel them actually being uh, swollen. And you're just gonna basically massage behind, in the front of the neck, and down here. If you're doing respiratory in particular, I would switch and have another one with the Breathe Free, with eucalyptus oil, and then I would do the front and back of the chest down to the waist. I would do the arms and the hands and then lift up. Then we're gonna do in here because right in this area we have a lot of lymph area, drainage. And then right here on the inside of the hip area on both sides, because this is where that area is. So that you don't really need to get right into the private area and you don't wanna take the chance of burning. So they're pretty much anointed. Uh, I don't usually do the, the buttocks but I will do this region right in here because of the lymph. And then we would go inside, again, not getting too close to the personal area, and work our way down. Or in this case, usually when I lay them, lay them down, I'll work from the feet and work my way up here, and then go back up here. If you're really doing with something like pneumonia, uh, again, with that Breathe Free, in addition to uh, the Spice Defense or the Spice Thieves, Okay, so if in particular we're really de dealing not just with, you know, a cold, a flu kind of thing, but we're really getting some deep congestion or uh, pneumonia type things, I would take this same anointing oil combination that's diluted, and I would take and I would rub the front and back of the chest. And then if you want to further drive it in, take hot linen uh, pads or 100% cotton-like cloth diapers get them really warm and you might want to put a towel over so you don't burn them i try to get them as hot as i can and then put them on dress them with the towel either you can then take a thing of saran wrap and just wrap it around or you can take big thick towels some people will put um uh, fur or um heated pads but not just a preferably not just an electrical pad uh, heating pad because they interfere with the body's electricity and energy and most people that sleep in um, with heating blankets etc it's a, a well-known carcinogenic causing issue with the energy in the body but usually just just the hot pad uh, with the covering keeping that extra warm and driving that oil in and keeping it warm because again the heat uh, and the driving will help fight the pathogens Okay, so we're going to go ahead and have her lay down. So what I would do is I would start, I would get the, you know, the oil, and then I would just start massaging the feet. And, of course, you know, if you're trained in massage therapy, you could probably do a much better job. But the idea is just to be praying while you're doing this. It's always great when you're working with someone who, wants prayer and is involved in that prayer but you know i would just start praying and asking the father thanking him um, for the opportunity uh, to learn from 
whatever illness is there because every time we do that, we learn something, plus the body's being built, the immune system is being built, and it goes into memory with whatever it has to fight those so that the body knows how to do that. And so I would just do that. And then depending on the person you're doing it with, you know, they may love the foot rub. They may not. You know, they're just like, hurry up, get it on, get it over with. <laughs> it just really depends on the person uh, and, and maybe the relationship that you have with them. But that's what I would do. And if I have to, you know, refill my oil, you actually can get quite a bit after a while uh, with your carrier oil and your feet. And you just work this. And so... And again, like I showed you earlier, once we do that, because we just, you know, it's really important that even if you do nothing else, I think around the neck um, and the, the bottoms of the feet are very important. And if you can, up underneath the arms. But if you can do the whole body, um, minus the private area, like I showed you earlier. So, then, you know, after you anoint, I usually do one leg at a time. Um, I will usually start with the the right leg and the, the right foot first and work my way, way up and then do the other, okay? And then again, we do the front and back under the arms, the armpits and the arms. And then I'm gonna have her sit up and I'm gonna uh, go back to the neck because I wanted to show you a, a couple of things about the head, okay? Okay, so I wanna go back to the head. Um, you know, we showed how we would do the neck and up underneath here where the lymphs are, et cetera. But you know, when you have uh, sinus issues and or even ear earwax drainage issues, you can also use a eucalyptus or the Breathe Free formula and or just, you know, just a carrier oil uh, to help massage the sinuses. And so you can go around here and here and work it all back out here like this and so what you're doing is you're just massaging and you come up the nose okay and you can work it out and I'm sure if you went to YouTube you could find you know great massage therapists to show that but the, the point of is starting to massage and making sure you use plenty of carrier oil to do that if you had a headache you would use a carrier oil and you could take it you know put it here at the temples and massage that in with your, say, migraine relief or peppermint oil. Uh, Focus Now is a great oil for that. Back here, you know, and along the base of the neck. But you can do a lot with just massaging this area and going back here, going around underneath and really pushing in up underneath there and pulling right in this area to... Uh, and Cypress is really good. Cypress helps move... Uh, the mucus uh, helps stop blood, but also helps it circulate. So it's kind of what I call an adaptogen oil. And so you can use that also for pulling mucus and making those fluids in the body and the lymphs, the lymphs move. You can also do it with frankincense. So make sure that you wash your hands really well before and really well after. And if for any reason you ever make a mistake and you accidentally put an oil on, uh, without a carrier or it, it burns, do not add more water. Repeat, do not add water to rinse the essential oil off. Essential oils and water do not mix. When you add the water, you're basically trapping that oil and it will continue to burn or, dis or cause discomfort. What you want to do is add a fat, olive oil, uh, apricot oil, any kind of carrier oil you have. If you don't have any carrier oil, use milk. Hopefully you don't have too much low-fat milk because you're going to need milk. Uh, you're going to need the fat in the milk. Butter, you know, something that will slow down, uh, it will mix that, that thick fat, uh, animal fat or plant fat, will mix with that essential oil and slow down the absorption rate. Do not add water. And so that's really, really important when you're doing that. So again, make sure you wash your hands before and after really well. Make sure you put all your essential oil oils up out of the way um, so that young children and other people can't accidentally get into it. Um, and you'd be surprised, you know, even me, I have accidentally uh, put an oil near my eye that I thought was Einsight near the eye and it was frankincense. Thank goodness it wasn't oregano like some of other people I know. 
because you can really do damage with that. So you need to be careful with your, with your oils. Now, one of the, my favorite things I like to do, remembering that the body's electrical, is once I've anointed a person down, I like to cover their feet. If you can, get linen socks. And it doesn't even matter if they're too big. They, they don't always come in all the sizes, and they don't stay form-fitted like other socks. But it helps protect the bed, and if the person has to get up here and they're not putting all the essential oils and carrier oil on the, on the ground, you know, et cetera, when they're walking. And if you can... Put them in linen clothing. We have uh, linen nightgowns, uh, linen wear that you can wear. Or go to the uh, Goodwill, go to a, a thrift store and get you some linens or make them. And cover the body. Because what happens with the synthetic is that the body's energy cannot flow the way it should. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I would say you could even use 100% cotton, but I have not been able to find 100% cotton socks. But if you have 100% cotton clothes or 100% uh, a linen or even a linen cotton combination because then that way the energy of the body can um, flow correctly and really and truly we don't understand what the synthetics do to our body and the immediate envir environment around the body and the way the cells communicate and sometimes um, most people who start to wear linen and wear linen clothing or linen sheets, go to bed. They, they literally feel the difference. And some people can get rid of headaches just by taking off their synthetic socks, their uh, synthetic made scarves, hats, etc. Because the body's not been able to flow with the energy to get the life that it needs. And so that would be the next thing I would do is cover them in linen. Uh, for the men in our family... They like the linen sheets, and they have linen pants that they would go to sleep in. I like to, you know, wear linen nightgowns, etc. So, and again, you can go to remnantremedy.net slash radio and look up linen and uh, sheesh or linen, and we talk a lot about that. We have, like, I don't know, we've done at least 20, 30 hours worth of shows, and under, if you email me, uh, I release the first two parts of uh, a long article or mini book of introduction to linen from a biblical perspective, not just from, um, you know, what's out there on the internet. So, um, and then eventually we'll have part three and release it in a ebook or a hard Another copy thing book. that you can do when you're concentrating on anointing someone is what some people call reflexology. And we provide for usually when you order your first order, we provide a reflexology chart for the feet and it has the English and the Hebrew in there, so you can see, and we make that available to you. So the way the feet work basically is the, the big toe, the top of the toe, is the head, and then it works its way down with the body. Uh, just like, you know, in other words, you know, your head's here, right, and then you work your way down. The thing is, and a lot of people might have a hard time with reflexology because they, they think it's a little woo-woo, but the bottom line is this. We are literally, not just the way Yeshua said it uh, spiritually, metaphorically, but we are literally living stones, tabernacles, and we are literally houses of light. And the number one way that your body cells communicate is by electricity through the nervous system. And we basically have conduits of those nerves running from the bottom of our feet, from our hands, you know, all over our body, our face. There's a lot of things you can tell about a person and their health just by reading their face, uh, reading their tongue, wringing their fingernails. Um, you know, when the priest came to anoint, uh, they would anoint your, your right ear, your right thumb, and your right toe. Well, when you look at that, that addresses the brain, uh, the pituitary glands, and pineal, uh, the way you think, and your health overall. And there are some other spiritual applications to that, but that is one of the things. And of course they would anoint you right here, um, like the kings and the priests, right here on the top of the head. And that's one of the reasons why the Jewish people cover their heads is because the power of Elohim comes down and the energy when you study uh, quantum physics, et cetera, and you have the right equipment, digitized equipment, you can see that energy. Uh, coming and flowing in and out through the body. So that's the reason why we use reflexology. As a whole, I'm not big on it because I'm more of a 
topical, right on location application kind of person. However, I have seen amazing results with headaches uh, using just the point on the finger or the point on the feet for headaches or for back pain, lumbar pain. Um, you know, some people, I, I've never experienced this, but some people can put peppermint oil on the bottom of their feet and then taste it in their mouth a little bit later. But that's because the molecules and frequencies and energy of that essential oil that God created and spoke into it is also working in conjunction with resonating with the cells and the organs in your body that need it. So I just wanted to share that. There's a whole bunch to it. More than that, um, you can listen to some things about um, vibrations of holiness and other topics along that line by going to remnant remedy.net slash radio and you'll see the categories for shimmin uh, vibrations frequencies etc and i encourage you even uh, go under emf and listen to the show about why essential oils and linen is so important and what does it have to do with b being a believer because the bottom line is the battle of this world always has been always will be is the word of elohim debar versus the contronym of deber which Debar, and you can see in many of my teachings, basically in the original pictograph Hebrew language, can be vibrations, frequencies put in order in the beginning, which give order in life. Debar, which is the same basic letters, but different vowel, vowels, is the contronym, uh, which would be vibrations and frequencies causing chaos and disorder and death. And so those are, you know, and all of the world and all of creation is made around the balance of these two things. You know, in ancient medicine, in Eastern medicine, you know, it's been perverted, but it's the concept of the yin and the yang. It's, it, I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah where it talks about the covenant he made in, with night and day. And night and day represents those two different energies and creations. And everything that he spoke, if you break it down into the original language, his words fluttered and vibrated through the waters. And there's so much more to that. So I encourage you to go listen to that and um, maybe some of the videos, video teachings that we've done. And we hope to bring more trainings and uh, eventually open um, our own school. So, so let me show you a few other things that I have found that I think is very important for a remnant mama's medicine chest, okay? And again, having raised uh, several children, uh, five of my own and seven others and working with children, in children's home, uh, these are things that I have found that are very important. Again, I'm not a physician, but I can tell you that with a lot of prayer and intercession and learning enough about herbs and, and oils, I learned how to do some things that you would usually run to the doctor for, have to pay a lot of money to see the doctor, uh, pay a lot of money for a prescription, and then you would have repercussions from those medications and pharmacia afterwards. And so because I suffered a great deal from all of that, that's what drove me and caused me to learn so that I wouldn't be suffering at the hands of all that. I have for the last 40 years used Dr. Schultz's echinacea. Unless I grow and extract my own echinacea, I think that his is the best on the market. I don't think that anything in the health food store can, can you know, really compare. There is a brand that I've used in a, a pinch when I didn't have this, which is very rare in the last 40 years, uh, would be probably Nature's Way. You can usually, if you pay attention to his website, is herb, H-E-R-B dot, excuse me. His website is herbdoc.com, H-E-R-B-D-O-C.com. If you pay attention, he'll have free shipping. He'll have sales where like, you buy two and get one free. Uh, I usually buy the big one and then maybe the get one free. I have at least a year's supply of this all the time. I would never go without the strong power of echinacea and oregano oil, essential oil. Uh, the oregano essential oil is going to you know, have a really long shelf life, um, whereas the echinacea is in a tincture alcohol. It has a long shelf life. The other thing is... If you have young children and you're just now learning these things, you know, a lot of times, and some people have aversions to alcohol, but here's what you need to know about herbs. Certain herbs, because of their chemical constituencies, are better or stronger if you extract them into an alcohol 
some are better if you extract them into a glycerin or glycerite. And, you know, a lot of times we call them tinctures, but they're not really, they're glycerites. One thing I want to share about echinacea, sometimes you will find echinacea with golden seal. I don't think you find it as much as you, we used to 10, 20 years ago because golden seal has been over harvested and has gone from like 28 to $20 a pound to $100, $200 a pound. But I want to share this with you. If you're pregnant, do not use golden seal. Okay, there's lots of good reasons to use it, but it can cause contractions. And so it's not something you want to use, except a lot of times you will see echinacea with golden seal, especially to combat colds and flus, because it's believed that one attacks bacteria more and the other herb, I think it's the golden seal, I may have them backwards, uh, attacks viruses more, okay? And remember, God put the innate intelligence within plants to fight bacteria and microbes and parasites, etc. So, and they get smart. They're very smart. So when that's one of the reasons why antibiotics don't work, because these these creations of Elohim know the patterns, but they don't know and can outsmart God's patterns when it comes to the crop in the year. Because every year, every climate, every crop is a little bit different, even in the same crop field of say lavender, that the plant will adapt and change so that those pathogens have to learn to adapt and change too, but they can outsmart God's creation. There is a company that I used to use a great deal. A lot of um, homeschool believer moms used uh, people into natural medicine, and it was called Tri Light Herbs. They have a product called Scout Out, and it is Echinacea, Golden Seal, and some other things, I think, and I think they even have straight echinacea or echinacea gold still. But it's sweet. And so a lot of times when people are first starting out and trying to get their children to do this, uh, especially if they haven't grown up this way naturally, then they will use that because it's sweet. They're going to go for the, the sweet. And, you know, in my family, especially um, my children learned to grow up with this, although I did use the sweet, especially for the children's home. Um, what happens with the children it, that my experience was once they've had the stuff that even though it's very bitter, uh, they know it works. And so they'll come and ask for it. And that's one of the ways, you know, an echinacea is good is the, the more bitter it is, the more it's doing its job. So I would personally never do without this. I have used that in conjunction, uh, with oils, uh, it, with, uh, roseola, scarlet fever, strep throat, and I would give them, you know, a dropper, a dropper full every two hours, four hours. And then there's some other tools that go along with that. First of all, your children or, you know, anyone in your family, the number one way to health is to keep the plumbing going. So if you have to give it an enema, give an enema. If you have, but one of the easiest ways to get uh, your family to get rid of their plumbing, um, backup is to give them vitamin C. So find a good vitamin C. Always have on hand a vitamin C. If you're dealing with skin issues, regardless of the reason, I mean, you can use oils and you can use herbs, but when you're dealing with skin issues, it's telling you one thing, and that is your body is not detoxing through its other organs fast enough. So you need mega water and you need a lot of vitamin C because what it does is it flushes out the cells. And use the way that you can do a lymphatic flush with vitamin C, but we won't address that now either. So I'm just trying to give you a lot of ideas and things that maybe, if, you know, if you're really interested, contact me and we'll come back and we'll do, you know, a teaching on that or a little short video for you. So besides the echinacea and the vitamin C, the other number one herb that I think everyone should have is what I call mullein, M-U-L-L-E-I-N. And I have poured some out. This is some that I wildcrafted myself uh, in Montana when I lived in Montana. It, it grows there. Uh, the state considers it a noxious weed, but you know when you grind it, it um, it look, looks real fluffy and kind of like cotton. On the on the stem, it grows very tall. It can grow as tall as I am. And every other year, it actually flowers. And so you can use the flowers and you can use the leaves. 
Uh, we called it, and many call it up in the Northwest, Indian toilet paper, because the leaves get very big and they're very soft. And so that is one of the ways that, that people address it. Uh, there's another herb you can get on the ground called Herba Ursi or Kanik Kanik or Berry Berry, and it's excellent for the kidneys. But then, you know, for me, uh, so is, you know, juniper oil, uh, essential oil. So, and there's other things that you can do for that also. Which, by the way, uh, if you subscribe to our newsletter at remnantremedy.net, we have a past article that we addressed kidney stones. Um, and some other topics like this. Uh, one time we did varicose veins in depth, and uh, one time we did balding, you know, for the scalp, et cetera. So in bits and pieces, we have them here, and eventually we're working on a website to kind of pull them all together. But if you ask me for those, we can, we can get them for you. So all I've done is I've taken the big leaf. I, I, you can use the flowers, but, I, you know, I didn't always have the liberty to do that. Um, and then I just pulse it after I dehydrate it, and I, I pulse it in the Vitamix, and then I, I store it in a big bottle in a, in a dark cabinet. Here's the thing about mullein tea. You, you make tea with this. So you can, you know, you put it in your little tea bulb, or you can just put it in your pan, um, cover it, infuse it, you know, with some purified water for about um, 10, 10 to 20 minutes. But what I usually do is I'll bring it to a boil, I'll turn it way down and let it steep for about 20 minutes, super low. And then I'll just leave it on the stove and pour off of it for the day. If I have some left at the end of the day, then I will pour it into a glass, glass jar with a lid and I'll even add more water and then just set it in the fridge uh, with the herbs sitting in it. And so I can get another day or two pulling from those, from the plant material. Or you can make a fresh one every day, but basically that's what you do. The thing about mullein tea is it hardly has, it doesn't have much of a flavor. It's great to mix with peppermint tea and spearmint tea, especially when you have a cold. And that's one of the main reasons you use it is because it draws the mucus out of the body. If you're a female and you don't have a cold, sometimes you'll notice a, a, a vaginal discharge and it just means it's, it's just pulling extra things in your body that your body doesn't need. It helps with the lymphatic system. And some people use it for arthritis, pain, etc. I find it good cold. You know, children don't mind it. You can you can make it into, you know, a pitcher of tea uh, for your family. And or you can just do it warm. Um, doesn't have much taste again. And you could add it with peppermint or spearmint tea. Another way that you see mullen used, and I've done with this, this is a tincture. I've got this in grain alcohol. I've let it set at least 50 days. And then, you know, I'll open up and I'll pour off. You just want to make sure the alcohol covers the plant material. And pour that off. And you could take the tincture also. You don't have to do just the tea. But what you'll see is the tincture will be taken and mixed with garlic oil or olive oil. And put in the ear. Make sure you have enough olive oil with that garlic oil, though, because you don't want the garlic burning the ear. You can also use garlic, especially when you're dealing with little babies. Um, you can get a garlic oil, but you want to make sure there's... It's very much diluted with, say, olive oil, uh, so you don't burn the baby and burn the skin. But you can take that and put it at the bottom of the feet. One of the ways I used to um, treat our babies that were born to incarcerated women who had infections and colds was I would use a salve or an olive oil with some, a couple of, I would take, a, I would buy the little garlic capsules because I didn't want garlic oil that was going to go rancid after a period of time. I could have made the garlic fresh with olive oil and pressed garlic, but I usually didn't have time with that and running a, a private homeschool and a home for children. But I would get the little gel capsules of garlic and then I just stick a little pin in there and I'd push that, you know, squeeze the gel cap and mix it with a little bit of olive oil and rub it on the bottom of the children's feet. And then I would rub them in the other lymph areas, which I'm going to, which you saw in the anointing process for when someone's ill. So basically you want to get all the lymph areas around the neck, 
uh, under the arms, down the groin, the bottom of the feet. And basically the baby will smell like garlic breadstick. But you do this to adults too. You just want to make sure you always have enough carrot oil and dilution. And there are dilution charts for that. So one of the things I want to share with you that I had learned uh, early in my herbalist days when I was studying and experiencing, because most everything I share is something I have experienced. I have hundreds of reference books and information, but a lot of what I share, I've actually experienced um, having to use for me and my family, trying to find a way to stay out of the trap of pharmacia and, and you know the problems with the medical uh, system. Not to say that you never need them, but you know we we as a generation of mothers, and now I'm a grandmother too, uh, possibly going into great grandmother in the next few years. We've lost these skills that our grandmothers and our great grandmothers had way before pharmacia was so prevalent. And today, like one out of every three or four people are on medications that they basically could take care of by proper diet uh, and or, you know, using the right herbs to correct till they can get back on a, a proper diet because food is our nutrition. And it was food that we ate wrong in the garden that caused us to fall and sin. And in Revelations and other parts in the scriptures, it is plants or food that heals our body. So having been trained from a vitalist point of view is we want to, we want to do things that's going to cause vitality. And so there's two things I want you to search out for yourself. It's number one, God made a fever for a reason. And the fever is there to kill the microbe pathogen bacteria you know, the body's doing its job, just like in cancer. You know, I don't believe that someone really truly has cancer in the sense of having cancer. What happens is the body says, we got to take care of this and we got to push it off to the side, even if it means building a tumor around it. Um, and the same thing is true with mucus. Most people take over the counter or prescribe medications to dry out the mucus for their nose, their, you know, their snotty nose or whatever. And that is not the problem because God created us, Elohim created us that that mucus carried those pathogens out of the body. And so that's, you know, that's why it's there. And so that's why we use mullen to help draw. We want to draw that mucus out because while we're drawing it out, instead of trying to stop it up, it's bringing out the pathogens that's causing the problems. The same thing with our intestines. We need to clean and draw that out of the intestines. And so there's ways of dealing with the fever, with oils, baths, um, but at the same time, we need to, you know, there's a fine line between do we don't want to cool the body too much too fast because we want the body to do its job. We want the T cells and the white blood cells to do their job in killing the pathogen. So I just want to share that with you. And again, I'm not a doctor, but those are things that I think if you research and you get past the fear that you've been taught, uh, you know, and build up the immune system, I really, I, I implore you to go study vaccinations. I think they're totally unbiblical. They invade the body. And, and that could be, you know, millions of shows uh, by itself. And there's uh, vaclib.org. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. And, you know, we could go, but I won't do that this time on how it violates uh, scripture. But, you know, you have an immunity bank. And once you start pulling from it, you don't have it anymore. So when... You know, once you've taken out those um, withdrawals from your immunity back, bank, from your immunity bank, then when something does come along that you weren't prepared for, you didn't take a vaccination for, your body has nothing left to fight with. And so what you want to do is build your immunity bank with the proper foods, proper living. And in this day and age, it's extremely hard because we're being bombarded from every angle from society. So I also wanted to share with you before we finish up for today, I would encourage you to get some really good essential oil books for aromatherapy. This one here is the newest edition. It's got, I think, over 600 pages, and it's completely updated, and it's basically an overall book on essential oils and aromatherapy with recipes, etc. We also have, there's also this one called Aromatherapy for the Healthy Child. And I would um, encourage you to purchase those books because, you know, I may not always be here. There may not always be someone there. There may not always be an internet for you to go to, to look up 
And, you know, I grew up in a generation where there was no Google God. We had to learn it. We had to have the books. We had to have the resources. We had to have the experience. And so I think that everyone should have some good reference books. Thank you. And may your garments always be white and let your head lack no shaman. Shalom.